Let's bring advocate Stephanie Fick, Executive Director for Accountability and Public Governance Division at the organization Undoing Tax Abuse. Um, Stephanie, advocate Stephanie, rather, good afternoon and thank you for joining us here on the SABC at the SAWA. Um, a good afternoon, Liesl. Only a pleasure. Let's look um, at the issues um, before us, the complaints and the findings by the Ethics Committee. Perhaps you could just um, provide some context for those who've just tuned in. So the, um, um, the activist, uh, Zaki, um, uh, Zaki from um, Unite Behind, followed, he laid a complaint and it followed from the state capture report by Judge Zondo. So it basically boils down to the fact that, um, and the parliament also found that she acted unethically by not appointing a group CEO at PRASA, that, um, you know, Popo Molefi was busy with a investigation into some correct activities at um, a PRASA, and, you know, she, she, she tried to stop that investigation. And then there was also allegations, I know that, uh, from the state capture inquiry, that she used, um, you know, buses for, for ANC, uh, um, you know, meetings. Mm. Um, so it is. it was really that type of unethical behavior. Mm, thank you for that saying that. That she was found guilty of. Yes, because I actually wanted to go to the court, um, the Western Cape High Court, um, having rejected her plea and affirmed a temporary removal from her parliamentary duties. The, the, the plea was also rejected with costs. And I wonder if you could just speak to the role that the Parliamentary Ethics Committee played in the case and also the losses incurred as a result of the decisions or lack thereof that she um, undertook in that capacity. So firstly, maybe just um, to go a little bit back, she was actually fired. So, so all these complaints is about her being the, when she was the Minister um, of, of Transport. She was then actually removed from Cabinet by um, President Zuma, and she was only last year then reappointed as Deputy Minister um, of Small Business. And Parliament then, because of the complaint by um, the, the activist, then found her guilty of this, let's call it unethical behavior because it was a contravention of their rules in, in, in the Parliament. And they found that she cannot um, she cannot come to Parliament, she cannot attend any meetings in Parliament, et cetera, et cetera. So for the rest of the sixth Parliament, um, she will not be in Parliament. And then now our, our president has suspended her for a month, 28 February to 28 March, without pay. And the question is, is, you know, maybe the first question is one wonders why someone with that type of history was in any was in any case appointed as a deputy minister. And then um, secondly, is a month sanction without a salary good enough if you are advocating for combating corruption and holding people to account, etc.? No, absolutely. That was actually my follow-up question, just looking at whether it serves as enough of a deterrent, particularly in the selection year. And also, when we look at the larger issues that are coming to the fore, um, you know, the parliamentary uh, culture, its implications as well, given the time that's also elapsed. What are you observing on that front as we speak? Well, um, sorry, your previous question was what, what's, what was the ethical, um, you know, Parliament's Ethics Committee supposed to, to do? So they are yes. a, you know, a committee in Parliament. And I think that, A, it took too long. And mm. Parliament, if you look at their constitutional duty, is to hold to account the executive. And then one wonders, um, you know, did they do enough firstly to give effect to the State Capture Commission inquiries report? Um, you know, what, ha what, what have they done really? Um, and then, for example, just uh, there was a recommendation that all the, the committee's uh, chairperson should maybe be an, 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 an opposition party. And although that's not a rule, um, Judge Donner could never have said, yes, you should do it. But that gives the public an indication that we can trust you again, because I think that there's a trust deficit. Mm -hmm. And did Parliament go all the way? Um, um, no. 
So here is the conundrum. Why in an election year? Is it to keep your, you know, your friends closer? Do, does, you know, the president need someone like um, um, Deputy Minister De Peters to, to keep him in, in, in power? One never knows. But the, the message it sends to, you know, ordinary South Africans is that despite certain actions and, and, and the damaged it calls to Prasa when she was Minister of, of Transport is, you know, you can't put that in money value and that where is the trust then in Parliament that should act on behalf of ordinary people? Absolutely, because Parliament sets the principles of openness and accountability, which is what you alluded to. And I wonder, just as we conclude, given the more complex issues at hand, what precedence this sets going forward? just as we wrap up i think the ethic quite frankly i think the ethics committee need to look at these sanctions um, mm -hmm. we've had discussions about this before and if you look historically at all the other people that got sanctions it is like you need to apologize uh, um, you know in this instance she from parliament side although the president only you know suspended her for a month without pay parliament just said she can't attend uh, committee meetings without deducting any pay, that Parliament needs to seriously look at the sanctions that they can give ministers, um, you know, or MPs that contravene these ethical rules, because it's extremely important. You lead from the top. And what we need in this country in order to eradicate corruption is ethical leadership. And if we can't see the examples, I am just always asking, what example do, do our kids have um, in this country with regards to leadership? We need to build them in order to give us leadership in, 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 in future. And if you, you know, this type of, you know, just putting a rubber stamp on whether someone behaves ethically, I don't think is good for what we want to achieve in, 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 in future, eradicating corruption, having more accountability, mm -hmm. ethical leadership, etc. Well, it doesn't you. set a good precedent.